Okay, welcome. Today we are going to take a look at how to use Google Documents to create a form for assessment. In this case, we're going to take a look at pre-assessment. So the first thing we need to do is go to docs.google.com, and I am logged in with my free Google account. If you do not have one of those, you will need to create one of those to create the form. Your students do not have to have Google um, logins, so that is a good thing for you, especially at the elementary level if you don't have you know, students with logins or you just don't use Google Docs in your district. So anyway, you can see here these are all documents that we looked at or created. And so we can go back to those and we'll be revisiting a few of those in just a minute. But if you want to create a form from scratch, we are going to go ahead and click on Create. And you can see we have some choices, but we're going to choose a form. And so our form is going to appear here. You do have the ability to change the theme. I'm going to keep mine looking plain because at this point the theme doesn't really mean a whole lot to me. I want to create a quick and easy assessment that I can pre-assess my students' knowledge and then use that to go ahead and drive instruction. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a title. So in this case, I'm just going to call this pretest for chapter, we'll just say chapter three. So I can then include some directions right here. You know, do your best. This is a pretest. You're not being graded on this. Something like that. And so then I can go ahead and type my questions in here. Or really, I can, if I am just want this to be an answer key, students are actually taking this on paper. I could just put question one, answer. And they can go ahead and put that in there. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and we'll keep this nice and easy. We will we'll go two plus two. I could put some help text in if I want. And then I choose the type of answer I want. So in this case, I'm just going to choose text because it's going to be a short answer. If I wanted them to write a paragraph, um, I would choose paragraph text. If I wanted them to be multiple choice, I could choose multiple choice text and so on. You'll see we have checks boxes, choose from a list, scale and grid, etc. So when I have that question done, I can then mark this if I want this to be a required one. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and set this back to text. And we'll go ahead and mark this as required. So this question is done. So I'm going to go ahead and click done. So you can see here I have question two that is automatically there for me. If I want to edit that question, or if I want to come back and edit either of these questions, I can come back and choose the pencil marker. So with this one, I can you know say, order these numbers. And again, I'm doing a math example, but you know you could really use anything that you want to. This could be social studies, could be science, could be language arts. I'm just picking something nice and quick and doing math. So they're gonna order some they're gonna order some numbers here for us we'll only put three of them in just to keep it nice and simple again I can put some help text in I can then change how this is gonna look I wanna make this required I do want them to answer if obviously if you don't wanna do that um, you don't have to check that box again that's just a requirement for you if you do check that box you're gonna see you get the red star I'll go ahead and uncheck this one just so you can see that so I have two questions on here one being required one not if I wanna add an additional question just go up to add items and you can see here are those different areas where I can go ahead and add. I can also do a page break or a section header if I want to kind of section that off a little bit. But I'm going to go ahead and just leave this at two questions just for the sake of time here. So I can email this form. So if I want to email this form, you know, so that I can then post that link to a website, I can do that. The link to this form is also going to appear down here at the bottom. I can see how people have responded in a spreadsheet or a summary and we'll get to that in just a minute. I do ha I have the ability to embed this, and I can you know edit the confirmation that'll happen. So, in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and take a look at this link so that you can see what a finalized version of this is going to look like. Here it is. So this is what your students are going to see. Now, one thing you're going to notice is once they hit submit, you have no idea who did this. So I'd re recommend the very first question you do is please put your name, and it could be you know first name, f you know last initial if you don't want to have them put their full name I definitely understand that so they would go ahead they would fill this out and then once they've got their answers in so I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of answer this the best that I can really quickly not really paying attention to whether I get it right or wrong I'm gonna go ahead and do submit and so that's what your students are going to see but now you are actually when we go back here what you're actually going to see is this. So here I'm back in my regular Google Docs. And so now here I have my results. And so you can see here, there was the question. Here were the answers that were given. And so that's, that way you can definitely, you're going to get a running list of how all of your students did. If I need to go back and edit that form, though, I can actually go back to form up at the top. 
and go to edit form and it's going to take me back to the edit mode here so I can add more questions if I want. So that's an example of pre-assessment um, using Google Docs. Now I want to show you a finished one really to take a look at what you can do with the data. So I'm going to go to this math pretest here and you're going to notice that some of this is in green. That's because I have set conditional formatting. And the reason I have done this is I want to go ahead and actually have the correct answer show. It helps me visually make um, good decisions on instruction because now I can see how the entire class did um, on this individual question. So I can see if that's a skill strength or a skill weakness. To set the conditional formatting, I selected the column that I wanted and then I went to uh, my drop down arrow and I choose conditional formatting. In this case, I set it to equal to, so anytime I get an answer equal to that, it's going to go ahead and make the background green. Now, I could change the rule a little bit if I want to, but equal to just seems like the right choice. And so now, again, I can see how my students did, and I can make instructional decisions from there. You're also going to see in the right-hand column here how I didn't enter the name question until the very until I had another student do this and again in my example. So if you don't put the name box in, you're never going to know who did this. So please make sure your first question at least has some sort of student identifier, whether it's their name or a student number or something like that. So that's an example of using it for math. Um, again, other examples might be you know as a pre-assessment form. In this case, the KWL. So here I can actually see how my students answered. And there you can see what more of a paragraph response might be. So that is using Google Documents to create forms for assessment. And I hope that you can use that in your classroom.